I think another good title for this would have been how to stand on what you're rejecting or how to ensure that you don't get the thing that you're rejecting, right? So you see, this doesn't mean that you're going to fight them because I know that this is one of the things that discourages people from making their stand. Do not be afraid. And I'll tell you how. The way to look at it is not as a confrontation. Remember that the battle is in the spirit realm. As we said in the last two videos, it's all about what your mind has accepted and what you know that God has planned and proposed for your life. That is why I said that you must know yourself first so that you realize that there is no negotiation because it's either you reject it or you accept it. Let me ask you, are you going to fall for fears and threats from negative spirits? The answer is no. No, you're not. And so that's why you must keep the following words close to your heart. One, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And two, I know my thoughts for you are of good and not of evil. How many of you have heard these things? I know all of us have heard them, but we gloss over them. We don't even apply them in our lives. We generally gloss over these things. We read them almost as if we're taking them as literature. We hear them, we know them, but somehow we don't apply them practically. So we need to begin to apply these things practically in our lives, literally, and let that book of life be in practice. The words of God be in practice and be what we're practicing in our lives so that we can see the results practically instead of going around and around and around, even though the words are there for us to apply, to use for our lives. You know, it's like we just read them as literature. No, we're supposed to let them be practicalized. So keeping these words in mind, you now look at your refusal of what is not good for you as you being loyal to what you think of yourself in your heart and for what God's plans and thoughts for you are. So what you think of yourself in your heart, you already know. What are God's plans for you? You already know they are of good and not of evil. And this is why when you contravene these, you find yourself in turmoil. Full and final stop. Now, I will explain to you how you can have these conversations, making sure that it makes sense, that they're not a fight, that it's not a confrontation. Because I know that this is what discourages a lot of people. This is what people find scary. Do not be afraid. Be encouraged. Now, remember that if indeed it's an unhealthy for you that's going on here, if it's an unhealthy thing for you, then why should they want to pursue that? So when you refuse it entirely, they're going to now have two choices. They're going to either get so angry that, or, and refuse to budge and then decide that they would rather risk losing you or they will start to try to negotiate it since, you, since they're seeing that you're not taking it. Remember, you are not negotiating. The negotiation is from their end because they are the one introducing something that you don't want. So let them do this job because this job, this thing is unhealthy for you. Let them make their case. Let them make a case for why you should go through this thing and then you watch and see what unfolds next. If they're only going to remain with you by subjecting you to something that is unhealthy for you, then it tells you straight up that you are there to be used to fulfill their own purposes. And so therefore, it means that you should be ready for this to continue if you accept it because this is the way that they intend to deal with you. This is the reason why these things never stop. So now do you see the very reason why you must not give in from the get-go? Let me relieve you of that fear that holds you back from making your position known. It is the idea that you're going to now have to confront someone or fight someone or raise your voice or be seen as stubborn. But this couldn't be further from, this truth, from the truth. Remember, everything starts from the mind. That is just the way that you're perceiving it. Remember that I told you that perception is not always necessarily reality. So it's just the way that you're perceiving it. So you don't have to approach it that way. No, because when you're thinking of how you're going to confront someone or fight or raise your voice or be stubborn, it makes you feel like, I'd rather just keep quiet. Let me just keep quiet and, and let things be. But you see, 
that is how you get yourself into an unending cycle of pain and there is no need for any of that so you're going to tackle this like grown-up person that you are the grown-up rational person that you are but there are two catches that you must fulfill of course you have responsibilities as well you must fulfill these two following catches so that you are above board in your dealings with other people one you do it without fighting you do it in all calmness. You are simply going to state how this thing is unhealthy for you and you are concerned that they are not concerned of the negative impact on you. And now if they have anything reasonable to say, this is the time for them to say it. So you see how this is a conversation. There is no need to fight. But should you be dealing with someone who wants to fight, you just tell them that you're going to allow this to go for now. And then you, you're going to both come back and discuss it again when they are calm and they're ready to speak with you like an adult because you care about the integrity and protection of this relationship. Sometimes it, it may not go down well with some people when you say talking like an adult because they might just see it as an insult. But they're dealing with someone who finds that an insult. Okay, let, let me put it this way. Some people... It may not actually be a wrong thing to say to some people because it helps some people, people who are reflective and rational, to think about it and say, okay, so I need to be careful so that I don't appear like I am not behaving like an adult. But for some people, they're going to take it as an insult. And if someone flips when you say that, what it shows you is that they are probably lacking emotional regulation. They're not supposed to flip. They can say, oh, 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 so what are you saying? Are you, are you insulting? You know, the way they approach it is going to tell you if this person is actually a rational and reasonable human being, right? So if they flip, when you say, when you make a statement like that and they are flipping and getting angry, all mad about it, now you need to step back and ask yourself what you're doing with someone who cannot emotionally regulate. Is this someone that you should even be with in the first place? If they're going to be someone who is going to fight, even though you are coming at this calmly and you have stated that you don't want to fight because you want to maintain the integrity of this relationship, you say to them, you know what? I care so much about this relationship to get into a fight with you. I want us to speak about this later respectfully in a civilized way when you calm down and we're able to speak respectfully with each other let us try this conversation again so that we don't put our relationship in jeopardy and no one can fault you for saying this you know that you have demonstrated good that you're not trying to rock the boat you're not trying to mess things up you're only looking out for the integrity of this relationship what is wrong with that? No one can fault that. But if they happen to be that person and they continue, then you have to now just gently leave the room. Some people may try to stop you even when you're leaving that room. If they pull you back or if they try to get physical, just be looking at them. And as they are talking, you say, I cannot engage in this conversation now. And if it's someone who becomes violent, there you have your answer. Why would you want to continue engaging in something with this person who is going to get to the point where they cannot even control themselves and they're going to lay their hands on you? If whenever they don't get that way, this is what, what's going to happen. You're going to get physically manhandled. You, you, you understand now how these things happen. These things progress. They, it, they, it's when you, don't start the, when you don't stop them in the beginning, that is how you find yourself stop in these terrifying situations because imagine if you had stopped it in the beginning okay let's say this person even tried to beat you up let's say this person tried to beat you up and you're not responding there are only two things that are going to happen they're going to stop and when they stop this gives you the opportunity to leave it gives you an opportunity to exit the relationship knowing that this is what your face is going to be if you remain in it or they actually beat you give you proper beating and physically manhandle you and once they have done this and this episode of beating is done everything is off you got your answer rather than 
trying to make it work and make it work. This is this is how these things happen. They start from lit the littlest things. So you're approaching this thing with calmness. Look at it. And if they can't even respect the relationship and respect themselves in something like this to deal with, to deal in calmness, you've got all your answers. So let's say that the person instead decides to, to talk reasonably. That's perfect. Now this is what we want. So we continue the conversation. Good. And from here on, the ball is in their court. So you see how it works. You also now say that the only thing that stops you from holding on to your dignity in cases where you have done that in the past is just your refusal to lose them. Your refusal to take the chance that they will not deal with you if you are not allowing them to mistreat you. So what sense does it make? It makes no sense that you go ahead to allow them because this is not going to stop. This is the way they will be dealing with you. If you notice, when you start a relationship with your friend or whoever you start a relationship with, the way that you start after the, after the beginning, the, the times of actually getting to know one another, the way that you allow that relationship to continue to build, to take off, is the way that it remains. I told you before in previous videos, look at your relationships of the past 10, 15 years. What has really changed significantly? Not much. The dynamics haven't changed significantly. When they have changed, it has been something that disrupted things, something serious that disrupted things. So really, otherwise, things will continue to move in motion at the same rate unless something big, something huge. Is your relationship really something that you want to put on that type of roller coaster? That is why we nip things in the board. So you see your refusal to not allow them to end this relationship when they're fighting to minimize your dignity is always in your power. You see why I say that? Because you're now thinking to yourself, oh, so the next thing now is that I'm going to lose this relationship. And I say, whether it's your sister, your brother, your uncle, your mother, your cousin, this is the first step. Treat it like you are ready to lose a relationship. Okay? If they've touched you, of course, we know that that's the end of it. We push them aside. Don't think, don't mind all those people who tell you oh, the person has anger issues, they should, they should do this counseling or don't. Listen, don't listen to them. Nobody who has anger issues, who is going to be becoming physically abusive, who is going to be disrespectful, is actually ready to be in a relationship in the first place. They need to go and work on themselves first. See, we don't realize that many of us are not ready for relationships and we get into relationships and that is a problem. So you get into a relationship with someone who is not ready to be in a relationship yet. Someone who is not ripe, who is not ready, who is not qualified, who is not mature enough. Or maybe it's even us, maybe it's us who are not mature enough to get into a relationship. And then we go in and expect someone else to deal with that madness. No. Just as people qualify to become a teacher, an engineer, a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, a pharmacist, whatever, people qualify. People do need to qualify to be in relationships. And that is why I have a relationship qualifying coaching that you can tap into seriously because i'll tell you what you need to check yourself and prepare yourself and also check that the other person is prepared to be in a relationship so that we're not going around hurting people you know some people get into relationships from a rebound right so they are not ready for a relationship some people get into relationships because they have some sort of trauma they're unhappy and they're looking for someone to lean on oh there's so many things that make people not qualified for relationships so people think that they need a relationship at the time when they themselves are not healthy this is the thinking that we must begin to disabuse from our minds we must know that not everybody is ready for a relationship. Some people are insane. Some people have mental issues, you know, and all those people that you hear about, they are somebody's brother, sister, somebody's mother, somebody's father, somebody's 
somebody something. People walking around, but there's something wrong with their gray matter. You know? I say that even, even you'll see in my posts that even with parents, children, it's unfortunate that people are not required to pass an exam or to get a licensing or a licensing or an evaluation, even psychiatric evaluation, to be able to become a parent. Because some people are just not qualified for it. And that is why they get in and have children. And then they begin to mess up the children's lives with trauma. The other day I had a, 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 a 30 something, a, a woman close to her 40s now, in her late 30s, she's battling with trauma from her father. Do you understand this? So she's lived three decades already, almost in the fourth decade. And she's still battling. The other day, I told you guys about um, a woman who talked about her sister who is being traumatized by their mother. And no matter what she does, the mother will not validate her. So you see, some people are just not qualified. This is just a fact. You know, so, uh, but we can't choose these people. We cannot choose who our siblings are. We can't choose who our cousins are. We can't choose who our parents are. We can't choose who our children are. Because yes, some children come and they traumatize their parents. They traumatize the whole family. We can't choose these ones. These are relatives. When it's blood relatives, we can't choose them. But when you're going to now, you have an option when someone is going to come into your life and become part of your life as a friend or as a partner. There you have an option. So we need to pre-qualify these people. For the other ones, we had no choice. But for these ones, and they need to pre-qualify us as well. Not only that we're ready to be in relationships, that we're ready to be in a relationship with this person because of the way this person's mind works. Because human relationships are complex. And it's, it's important that we, we stop pretending or stop going about life as if it's as simple as that. We need to know that this is a person with whom we can navigate things sensibly. And some people just cannot work together because some people's brains are left brain. Some people are left brain and some people are right brain. And it's difficult. And don't even listen to when they tell you that opposites attract. You see, there are lots of things that we've been conditioned to believe that don't make sense. Opposites do attract in the sense that you may be lacking in something and you may like it in the other person because you've seen that they have that thing that you don't have. So that may be attracting you. But what if this person prefers someone who thinks like them so that when you get together, you're always hitting your heads together. So we don't go to relationships with preconceived ideas. We don't do that. We need to deal with each relationship based on its peculiarities and the peculiarity of the individuals involved. Because there are people that will come with their trauma and their problems and I can handle them. I can handle it because I know what to say to them or I know how to deal with them or I know how to adjust myself because of the trauma that they've been through or because of the problems that they come with. Miss B may not know how to, Susan may not know how to deal with this person. But when you take what people say, the generalized conceptions that people throw out there about relationships, you go in there, it may not apply to this person. So we need to be very careful about our relationships. And unfortunately, what we find is that over the years, it's been marriage counseling. Marriage counseling, what it does, it is not positioned to solve problems that sh that you don't want to be dealing with it is it is positioned to now manage yourselves and it means that if you're going to continue that relationship the relationship might last another 30 40 years but you are living in misery because now you are stuck and maybe you are the ones who don't want to separate so it's more important to have pre-marriage counseling pre-marriage guidance, it's more important to have that so that you're building on a solid foundation. I know that that makes sense. So you don't let any and everybody in your space and to have a relationship with you. So people should not let you have a relationship with them. So let's begin to, let's go forward knowing that we're supposed to be pre-qualified 
Because you see, human beings have grown up from different walks of life and different experiences and are coming with all their baggage. So we really need to pre-qualify ourselves before we get into other people's lives or let people into our lives to come and begin to make a mess of our lives. And that reminds me, this lady was traumatized for about 10 years. And guess what? After everything, it turned out that it was her own relative, someone very close to her. Someone that she was even sharing her problems with was the one who was creating all these problems in her life from a distance. She was doing it cunningly, she was doing it underground, and she had no idea. So what I'm trying to say is, we have blood relatives that some people are just cuckoo, unfortunately. So her cousin had secretly been messing up her life. And this is someone that she felt very close to. So a lot of us don't realize that some people are sick. Some people may have been dropped on their heads as babies. I say this a lot and I know that it sounds funny, but I mean it. Some people were dropped on their heads and so something has gone wrong in the brain. Some people, maybe their brains didn't form properly, but you don't know because it doesn't show on the exterior. So they can be, they can be laughing and kind and appear very normal on the outside, but they are sick. You don't know that they are someone else because the brain is missing some elements. And I'll tell you what, in psychology, in medicine, it's been found that some people's brains did not develop some certain parts. So there are cognitive parts of the brain where if somebody is missing them, they may not, you think that you're dealing with a reasonable, normal person, but you don't know that they are missing parts of certain parts of the brain that help people to understand certain things. And so that's why you find sometimes that no matter what you say to somebody, no matter what you do and no matter how you explain, they just cannot get what you're saying because that part of the brain that you have that understands that thing, they don't have it. Or theirs isn't functioning well. It hasn't been exercised and so it's lying dormant. So that's why I say again, many times people are not necessarily doing things to us because they want to hurt us. They're not taking this action because they want to hurt us. That's why I encourage us to understand where a person is coming from. We don't have to stay to take it, but we need to understand that they may not be seeing the thing that we're seeing in the light from which we're seeing it. So to them, they're wondering, why is she think making such a big deal of this? But to you, it's a big deal, but they cannot recognize it that way. So they're actually thinking that you're the one who's being difficult. So that's why you don't stay and remain trying to change a person's behavior on something because they just may not be seeing anything wrong with what they're doing. And it's better to know this before you tie yourself together with them in something where by the time you're ready, by the time you recognize and you understand that they're never going to stop this hurtful thing, it's too late. It's too late to change things. Do you understand? So this is why I say, it's always better to know people slowly, get to know people slowly, allow people to reveal themselves. Because in the beginning, when you meet people, you're not going to see those things immediately, you know? And anytime you see things, don't just overlook them. Don't overlook them. Call them out on them. Because they may not actually know that this behavior is wrong. Or is, is unacceptable so you have it that's why you have to have a conversation with them that's why you don't that's why i don't say abandon them that's why i say you need to have a conversation because what you what you understand that they're doing something wrong they may not understand it maybe nobody has told them before maybe people have told them before but they ignore that but when you tell them now they're going to be like really what is wrong with this thing but they finally come to understand that people do not want this behavior of theirs. You need to call it out. You need to call it out. Remember what you think of yourself in your heart and remember what God's plans and purpose are for you. So keep in mind that when you're getting into a relationship with anyone, do not expect that everything is just going to be perfect because you want it to be perfect because you know that you're going to come with your best behavior. You don't know who they are. Allow them to reveal themselves and take your time to pre-qualify them so that you're sure of what you're getting.
it's really silly of us to meet people and feel like uh, we're falling in love with them and we really really like them and everything is just going to be working smoothly what if this person's brain didn't form completely what if they're missing part of the brain so this should help a lot of us who deal with heartbreak to understand that it's not always deliberate from their parts we may have been trying to make things work with someone whose brain wasn't functioning completely. No matter how patient and nice and kind you are, no matter how patient, no matter how nice the person appears on the outside, take some time to pre-qualify them. Because when people behave like this, that sometimes it's that they really didn't want that relationship with you because you're really not what works for them. You don't work well together and they can already see that, right? And so this is not what they want and so they're not going to be cooperative. But sometimes it is that something is wrong and even they may not know or they have some sort of trauma or there's something that they still need to work on before they are ready for a relationship remember that always some people even have some idea that they're looking for something even though what they are looking for is already in front of them but some people are constantly in this mode of they are looking for they are looking for they are looking for and they don't even realize it so don't stress yourself. Just take your time to check who you are dealing with to know what you have. Otherwise, your expectations and your hopes may be too early, right? So test them and check them to be sure because not everyone is qualified to be in a relationship. Never forget that. You see now how the power has always been in your hands, whether to give up your dignity or not. And you should never never ever do that never never give up your dignity because i repeat again this will be your destiny going forward this will be your fate it won't change let me tell you a story about someone very close to me a medical doctor in nigeria she was preparing she had written exams she had done the applications and she was getting ready to go to europe to practice medicine but then she was now going to marry this gentleman. She was now going to marry this man who lived in the U.S. And he said to her, never mind. Why don't you practice in the U.S. instead? So they got married and they moved to the U.S. Can you believe that upon getting to the U.S., he told her that she could not practice? That she would have to be a stay-at-home wife. And she said, no, this is not the agreement that we had. But he insisted. If she had known, she would have just stood on that and continued to talk about it or put an end to the whole marriage. But I'm sure that she was thinking in her mind, I am married. Uh, probably with time, he will come around. He can't do this to me. I'll keep on talking to him. But guess what? The first year passed, the second year passed, the third year passed, the fourth year passed, the fifth year passed, the sixth year passed. Like her life was going by before her very eyes and she was just there, a medical doctor whose whole plan from the time of her youth was to become a doctor. She was now stuck at home being a stay at home mom and wife. There is nothing wrong with that, but not when someone decides to enslave you, enslave your destiny and put them in his pocket and now be a God over your life. That just doesn't make sense. And if you recognize that, if you don't stand on what you want and reject what you know is not your path in life when it shows up, this is how your life may just go. So it's up to us. It's in our hands. The power is in our hands, but we don't recognize it many times. And that's why you find people have lived with something for 20 years, 25 years, 30 years. People have lived with something that they never wanted in the first place. But remember, we don't fight. We approach calmly like rational thinking persons because we actually care about the relationship. We're doing everything to maintain not just our dignity, but also the dignity and respect of the relationship. Do you even recognize that this is like you have chosen somebody else to become your God because they are the ones determining what is happening in your life. So it's kind of like idol worshiping where instead of God being the one to determine what will happen in your life, you and God have lost control of your life. Your life is now in the control of another human being. 
it just doesn't get better than that like no explanation is better than that and i can just end this video now tell me if that doesn't make sense to you they're already wrong i've been issue because they are not treating their neighbor the way that they would want to be treated so there is no reason why you should tolerate people who are not treating you in the way that even they wouldn't want to be treated you see all the things that are going on here you switch god for this person this person becomes your god you are now an idol worshiper of another human being this person is controlling your life you are allowing someone who is contravening the very laws of nature the very laws of godliness to be the one to, and implementing it in your life and you think that you are being difficult by insisting on the right thing it just makes no sense you are not even supposed to by nature allow another person to treat you this way just remember we don't fight we keep our integrity and the integrity of a relationship and let the other person be the one who decides to ruin it so that we're always above board that's my preaching no fighting whatever is bad for you you must stand against it with all your might as a man thinketh in his heart so is he always remembering that once you do not do that this is not as you think of yourself in your mind once you do not do that you are stuck with what you're cho you've chosen. Okay. And people that have experienced this understand exactly what I'm talking about. It does not change. Because this is the way that they interpret relating with you and your relationship dynamics. It doesn't change. So nip it in the bud. Otherwise, it becomes a burden and an albatross around your neck. I seriously want to believe that this message has gotten through to you. Ask your uncles, ask your aunties, ask even your parents if this has not been their experience whatever they didn't like that they allowed has been the same for the past 30 40 years it's just as simple as that it's as simple as that only in very rare cases does something change is that what you want for yourself i seriously want to believe that this message has gotten through to you and let me remind you again ask yourself before we close this is what you are choosing really what god will be happy to be happening in your life you have your answer and i remember that i said that there are two catches and the first one is about approaching the conversation not as a fight and the second one we'll deal with in the next video has this helped make clear your understanding of saving yourself if you find this a worthy conversation then consider sharing it with others give it a thumbs up and i hope you've subscribed to this channel see you in the next video for the second catch let's go